Hello everybody and welcome back to Farming Simulator 2017 with another mod showcase. Now this one is going to be a little bit long. There is a lot to this pack. This is the Vehicle and Implement Pack 1930 through 1960 version 1.05. Basically a Stalin's pack. So it's all old Russian equipment. And there are a couple issues but nothing huge. Uh, mainly nothing really being translated to English. So it's really hard to understand how each piece of equipment is supposed to work, what every implement is for, and everything like that. So I'm going to try to explain how everything works. <laughs> so we'll start out with the three tractors. Um, here they are. You get your own little stall and menu here. So we've got the Pultevec. It's $1,000. It's 20 horse, or 32 horse. Or no, yeah, it's 20 horse. I had the wrong one selected. This is a 1530, it's a replica of a McCormick tractor, and it's 32 horse. There are no options for either of these tractors. And then we get down to the bulldozer type tractor, the C60, and it is 60 horsepower, 391 liters of fuel. It holds a lot of fuel. So, here's a quick look at everything. These look like older models. Uh, they're not bad. I mean, there's a lot of detail in the parts of the models themselves. I mean, we can see rivets and everything holding the steel wheels together. Uh, the, you know, the fan belt and things like that. It's not horrible. I wish the texture was a little bit different, but not bad. Here is what it sounds like when it starts up. And everything has this nice little creak whenever it stops. So, yeah, again, it's not horrible. This is for people that like older, older implements and a lot smaller farms. This is small farm equipment. And like I said, there's a lot of it. Here is the bulldozer. And it is extremely... If I look at the right thing... Is very very nicely modeled I wish we had dozers in this game with as much detail as this track I mean it is awesome it rolls over all the rollers the tensioner I, it's it's so good I really wish that we would have something with this much detail in it because this is very very nice everything's you know textured properly everything works like it should you've got a front and a rear hook the front one is way up under there but it does work only on certain things you have to keep thinking that everything works in the way it's supposed to work so there are certain machines you have to use for certain things it's not overly loud which is nice it is slow everything in this pack is really slow but nothing back then was extremely fast. So yeah, that is the bulldozer one. I don't know what they're called. I mean, I, I honestly don't know. I can't read Russian. I'm sorry. <laughs> so this is the 1530, the McCormick. Uh, it's probably the least detailed model. It's not horrible. It can be done a lot better. I think if somebody took this and added a lot of stuff to it, it would be really, really good. Like... A belt drive or something that would appear as a PTO for some of the equipment would be so cool because that's just really a flywheel to get it started. It's not really attached to anything. Uh, it's a little bit bland. I mean, every slot is actual. It's actually modeled. So, and there are a couple of options whenever we look at it here. So, uh, key seven takes off the engine cover. And we can see what kind of motor it is. It's four cylinder. Apparently, it's gas because it has spark plugs. I thought they were all. Well, no, back then, yeah, they were all gas. It looks like we got like a little bit of oil leak and exhaust leak around the uh, exhaust manifold. You know, again, it's not horrible. The fan does move, and it takes forever to get started. I guess. And again, it squeaks whenever you stop. Inside view isn't horrible. 
Again, it could be better, but no, yeah, I mean, it, for somebody looking for older farm equipment, it could be really nice for them, or it could be, you know, kind of bothersome. This is the interior view of this, and as you can see, it is a lot better modeled. I mean, we even have a line for, I guess that would be fuel coming off of that top tank. Even though the bottom one's fuel too, I don't know what the top one is for, but it's got like a line going down there. We've got all the valve covers there, two bolt, the stack for the, uh, God, stop, let me out that side. <laughs> uh, where your carburetor and then your exhaust would go and all that fun stuff. Here is what this looks like. Again, it's not horrible. Could be better, but you know, I'm just doing a basic overview. This one's going to be a little bit longer, like I said. Okay, the second part we're going to look at here is the truck that has all the different beds. It's like that Tatar or Tatar Tatra? Is it Tatra? The the Phoenix pack that you can get with all the different beds and everything. So let's run down through them here. We have the manure Bowser, the water Bowser, which holds 4,000 liters, fuel Bowser, the covered, it's just basically a covered truck, the seed tipper, a silage tipper, and then a regular tipper. And they all work. Everything works. Uh, here is the inside view of our truck. It's not horrible. It does get dirty. Everything in the pack does get dirty. So we can actually do that here. Yep, everything gets dirty. The truck looks like it's made out of wood. I mean, it looks good. It's not horrible looking and you get some special options. Seven opens that door and nine opens that door. And they're not like bound to uh, any keys or anything besides those. So you don't gotta like go out or anything like that. And it gets very loud whenever you go into reverse. I think it's like the reverser gear going in. So you back up here, you hit Q. Loads it up. And let's see if there is any special options here. I can refuel off the trailer to the side. And we can control I. Now nothing tips, even though they're called tippers. So the bed just kind of opens and then the stuff falls out. We can get unhooked from there. Uh, they do work. I went and filled up the fuel canister just to make sure. So there we go, 4,000 liters. And I think I've gotten too close. It's kind of freaking out. It's not done that before. So, yeah, that is this whole deal here. The 5V. So we got the tipper, petrol trailer, water barrel, manure barrel, seize module, product module, silage module. And then there's some trailers. I don't have the trailers laid out. They're in other packs. So we won't go over them. They're the same model as the... The modules but they're just got wheels on them there's nothing special there so next we have all of the transport trucks there's two of them one with a trailer one without a trailer they're here trailer five and six okay the five is the one over there I'm trying to remember here and ten is the the big truck this one here this is truck 10 and this is truck 5 so they've got you know little options here and there nothing special just a close and open cover and this one has like a auto load feature and I got it to work one time but I don't know if it's like backwards or forwards or, or however it works but uh, I only got it to unload once, so I wasn't going to show that here because it's kind of awkward to use and I didn't really have any bales to work with. So yeah, cover on, cover off. They all have the same sound as the other truck. 
this detaches. And attaches. And the closed cover on this one is the back gate here. So you would load it full and then just hit in and it would actually like hold it in. So Okay, next are the cars. And they're varying degrees of okay and not okay. Uh, I like this truck the best. It seems to be the best modeled. Uh, the texture work is a little blah, but it looks good. Everything is higher poly than the rest of it, so nothing horrible. It has the same sounds as the truck that we were just in. There's nothing special about it. I don't know what board is. Oh, okay, it just opens the deal. I should have known that. The little Jeep is probably my favorite. It's nothing, you know, horribly special or anything, but it's probably the fastest vehicle in the pack. Uh, it's good for driving around the farm and moving all the equipment around because the tractors are so slow. Okay. Then we got, I'm going to call it a paddy wagon. <laughs> it's something 55. Uh, interior is not horrible it could be lightened up a little bit the texture is extremely low pixeled and there's not a lot to say about it honestly and then we've got the newer style car it's a little bit nicer on the inside and it's just made to drive around there's nothing really you know extremely special we need to talk about them or anything so, yeah, that is the cars that come in the pack. They are located throughout. It might be. Yeah, we've got the, the 55, the 67, the AA, and the M1. Okay, now we come to the field equipment. And there are a lot of pieces here. I've got them laid out here on field 25. And they come in varying states of quality. Uh, again, this is a pack. This is not something that one person made. It's different mods all thrown together in one pack. So we have to keep that in mind. This is the cedar. It works like a normal cedar. It opens, closes. You got your little guy on the back. I guess he's supposed to be feeding it seed or something. Get the tractor started up. And all the seed selections do work. There's nothing in this pack to plant potatoes and everything like that. So all the controls are normal controls. It's hire a worker, detach, fold it, which brings up the bottom pieces and down the little handles. Uh, the covers don't open. So, you know, it's just a normal run of the mill old school eater. It's actually pretty good model and I like all the texture works and all the rivets and everything it all kind of works together it looks the part so I think that's pretty good okay so the first actual implement implement that we have is the manure spreader uh, it works not with a PTO okay most of the tools in this pack work this same way so you fill this up Okay, and it's got like a little belt system that feeds the spreader and everything itself, but everything is powered by the wheels. Okay, so as the wheels go around, they spin that part, and that part is linked to a gearbox to spread the spreader and the muckrake and everything like that. So again, it's another pretty detailed piece. There's a lot of little you know items here like the kingpin and everything for the front steering we can see all the attachment points the wheels look pretty good with the rivets going into the spokes uh, the auger and is it an auger or is it an Archimedes screw in this point that is the real question we've got chains that run along there to help roll that floor around so the floor is a uh, moving floor and that is your manure spreader 
and it hooks up like a normal tractor. Okay, next up we have the fertilizer spreader, and it kind of breaks the rule that I was just talking about, so... It works off a of PTO if your tractor has a PTO output shaft. So it hooks up here and then the little dealio spins and it works. I kind of wish it worked off the wheels, that way it wouldn't spread unless you were moving. But as it stands, if we turn it on, it spreads. And it's a pretty good width. I'm going to say that's probably about 18 meters or so. It, do it doesn't tell you. Or if it does tell you, I can't find it. Let me check here. I might have lied. I hate lying to people. Okay, it's 10 meters. I'm sorry. I thought it was in the description of that. So, it's a decent model. A little bit of texture work would go a long way. I mean, make it look like it was actually made of... Let me turn it off there. A sheet metal, like for the hopper with sheet metal. And just a little bit of texture work would go a long way on this. And it would be a very, very cool old school spreader. It holds a thousand liters of fertilizer. Next is a sprayer. This is it in its folded out position. And it's probably my biggest gripe of the whole pack. It just doesn't look like it fits in here. I know that they had sprayers, but... I don't know. I, 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 the tank looks like it's made out of plastic. And, you know, it's got like this... looks like a newer kind of model for the... sprayer motor up front. But, I mean, it works. So, can't really complain. It's the same width as the other spreader, so... And it, had, and it holds 850 liters, so its capacity is a little bit lower. But it attaches, detaches, like everything else, the little jack goes down, even though it has a slight collision issue. Nothing horrible. Okay, next up is the sapling planter, the little tree planter. And it takes one pallet of normal like tree saplings, okay? So you load it and it just automatically takes it. It's nothing more than a simple plow with a rack and a little worker guy, okay? So we get in it, all the controls are like normal. So we first unfold it and we get our lovely angry looking man with the tattoo. Okay, and he's sitting there. He's having the time of his life going to plant some trees. We lower it, okay, and then we turn it on, and just pull forward. And it goes through and, you know, plants your trees like normal. Nothing really to say about the model. Uh, it's a pretty basic setup. There's nothing special, you know, about it. It's just an A-frame with a couple seats and a plow. Uh, the most important thing is that it works and it looks period correct because you got like the saddle seats and everything like that. So, yeah, it's decent. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is this attachment here. And I think it can be used for a few different things. Okay, so it's the ZP10. I think it can be hooked up with three of these. Three of these. Or three of these. So you've got your uh, cultivator, your plow, and your sower. And here's why. Okay, this is our setup with the cultivators. It's the right width. Okay, so if you had a sower behind it, you could do three sower widths. And because it's not PTO powered, and it's wheel powered, it should all work. Now, getting them all hooked up is a bit of a challenge, but this is how I found to do it. So, yeah, take that as you will. I'm taking a really, really big guess because it says that it hooks to a CA24, and there's nothing in this pack called CA24, okay? So, I mean, it works. We can go through here and select all these and lower them, which takes a little bit of time, and our tractor can pull them. So you can cultivate a pretty, pretty good little chunk, really, of field all at one time. So that is that piece, and those are the single cultivators. 
so I won't have to go back over them again. Okay, so this is the bigger trifold cultivator. It's about the same kind of deal as the other one. The only inclusion is the sides. So we just hit X to unfold them. V to lower it whenever it gets unfolded. And it's good to go. It's a pretty wide unit by itself, so... That's why I think that that has many different options. Uh, I think you could do a pretty big sower setup with it. So that is the big wide cultivator. Okay, now this is the first plow. It is this one here, and it's the only one with some options. Different kinds of attachers and a different design, but I have no idea what they do. This is the one that has everything on it. And the only difference that I've seen is that chain. So, yeah, I don't know what they do. I tried backing them into another one and getting it attached and could not get it to work. So, yeah, uh, it's a pretty good model. Uh, it's got all the turnover plows on it. They're all pretty... You know, pretty decent model there. Again, it's all wheel powered. You've got your depth, uh, which is done by that turning wheel. And a little hydraulic cylinder there. So we can hit V. And that lowers it down. And it's good to work. This is what it looks like when it's in the ground. You know, nothing too horribly special or anything like that. So, yeah, that's the first plow. Okay, this is the three furrow plow. Uh, it's a little bit, not a worse model, but it needs a little bit more texture work. And it's just a normal plow. You hit B to lower it, it all goes down. Three furrow, a little bit less working with. A little bit cheaper and there are no options for it. Okay, next we have the mower behind the 1530. You hit X to unfold it. The header bar goes down and we gain a little worker guy back there. It has a couple of options, uh, which is, I think it's J. Yeah, J puts this bar on, but it won't attach to anything. I think it's meant to be like you could pull the tether behind it, but I couldn't get it to work. Maybe I just didn't have it at the right angle. I don't know. So that does that. And it moves it. So, yeah, that is all how that works. And you turn it on. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start our tractor. Give it a second to chug along here. Okay, now we turn it on. Nothing happened. Okay, it's on. It's wheel powered though. So we go forward and we'll be able to cut a little bit of grass here. It does work. I kind of like it. It's, uh, it's a little bit odd to use, but uh, yeah, I, I really like it. Okay, so that is our cutter. So this is our tether, so uh, it's pretty easy, you just hit B, you get a guy, and as you roll, the little fork things go. So nothing really to say about it, it tets the grass. Now we don't get a windrower in this pack, so keep that in mind whenever you go tetting everything. It You're going to have a mess, so you don't have a windrower to come by and pick everything up. Wait. Forget what I just said. Yes, we do, but they're really odd, and they're one of the last things that we're going to look at. So that is your tether. Okay, so this is one of the more odd pieces of equipment that I've had to use. It is kind of like a buck brake and kind of like a forage wagon. It's, it's really weird. So it only attaches to this tractor. So you've got to use the 1530 on it. Or it just goes absolutely crazy and goes into the ground and everything. So we can attach to there and it gets picked up. The options are to turn it on. 
which actually allows you to pick up, and then you lower it. Nothing goes down, okay? Nothing magically comes on or anything. And you should be able to pick up some hay here. As we drive along, it should pick up all the hay. And it'll start to fill up. It's kind of a slow process, okay? And it also has a mixing setting, but I don't know what you would be mixing it for. It's uh, kind of weird. Uh, I don't know. It, normally you have three parts on your mixer, so that's kind of weird. Okay, so come down here to where we've got our nice little already cut field with some rows on it. So we'll go ahead and turn it all back on and see, even though it says it takes straw, it won't. So it's, it's very, very weird, but you can unload it. It'll make a nice little pal for you, which is nice. And then you can just go and scoop all this up. So, again, I don't know what the mixer thing is for, but it's there. And I thought you guys should know about it. So, well, now it'll take. That's weird. And it looks like it makes TMR. That's... Okay, that's really weird. I don't know what the... So one's got to be first before the other one. Apparently. Guys, I'm trying to figure this out, okay? I know it sounds like I don't know what the hell's going on, but I've used it, and it doesn't work, and then other times if you do things in a different order, then it starts working, okay? So I'm sorry if this seems like I'm just kind of winging it. I'm really trying not to. <laughs> but it's like things are not doing what they're doing, and then they're doing other things. So it's really, really weird. Okay, so this is the wind rower setup, and they only fit like this. I tried it the other way around with the left and the right, because that you buy them as a left and a right. And I find that they work a little bit better by themselves, so if you just buy like a left or a right, they are here somewhere. Yeah, right here. So you've got the two and a half meter left and right, and then the ZP5, which holds them together. So you could like drive down a row, and then it would shove them over to another row if that makes any sense at all okay so the options for them if we pick the right one would be to unfold it which just lowers it down and then you turn it on so we can do that to I've unfolded the tool hold on okay. oh you were unfolded B Okay, there it goes. So as you drive, they work. Okay, so we can come over here. I'm going to try to do this the best I can. It's Like like I said, it's, it's really weird to use. So we can do it like this. Okay. And it just moves it over just a little bit. It's like... If you TED something, you run one of them over it, okay? So they're not made for huge, huge fields. I would still have both, just for different things. So then we could hit the same part again with the other side, and we could just continue to scooch it on over. Okay? Now, I've had better luck with them as a single, but I wanted to show you, you know, that you can use this to run them in tandem. It's not a single, you know, deal. So, but they won't, you can't hook them up with them facing inward. Like, you can't, like, take two rows and make one together. They hit. Uh, I'm sure that you could kind of force it that away and really kind of screw with the physics of the game and get it to work. But I really don't like that approach to that. So, yeah, that is just that. Let me get one of them untouched here. So you can take the one here, and if just imagine that was what grass you had cut, and you can get them closer and closer together. That the main point of this pack is everything takes a little bit longer, so 
really just kind of get used to everything taking just a little bit longer. So, but you, as you can see, I mean, we have moved them over a lot, and that's from the big header right there. So that's like a 45-foot span or whatever the biggest header in the game is. So, I mean, again, they do work. But I thought that I would try to explain the differences, okay? Okay. So, we come to this part. This is the last thing that we have to look at before the two items I want to talk about at the end. This is the trailed harvester, and it's probably the most complicated thing I've ever used in farming sim, but I'm going to try to explain it the best I can. Okay, some stuff I still don't understand, but without knowing Russian, I couldn't tell you how it all works, okay? So, the front steer is like one of them bastard tippers with the steering front axle, so it's really hard to, like, move around. It's best moved around with the tractor, uh, that way you can kind of turn really, really quick. The... Harvester itself, and this is what I couldn't figure out, okay? So you have to get in it. Okay? And start it. So the harvester itself runs. Okay? It has its own fuel, but it is not movable by itself. Okay? So you get into it and you start it. To attach the header. You back up as close as you can without actually hitting it and you unhook it and pull away that way it's not anywhere near the trigger or anything like that and there are two headers okay let's talk, let's talk about this for a second this one does wheat barley canola and soybeans this one only does soybeans i don't know why but yeah so, if you have, like, if it won't harvest, that's the soybean one, and there's no, like, discernible difference. Okay, so we hop back in. What you're trying to line up, can't even see, is kind of those two pieces together. Okay, so we get in this, unhook that. Hopefully it works this time. Come into here. Unfold the harvester. Guy appears. There we go. Then we can attach... Boom, it comes on there. And then it's pretty much ready to go, okay? So, we hit G again. There's something called the Ismel. We hit K. It comes off the back. I think that's for swathing and not. I I honestly don't know. It looks like you could have, like, a trailer back there. So, like, you could have a tipper pulled behind it to catch everything. Uh, but... Other than that, I don't know. O is pipe out. It doesn't move the pipe. It just turns it on and off. So it gives you, like, the unload option here. J is for coupling. No idea what that does. I've tried to hook stuff to it and can't get anything to hook to it. So, yeah, that is a thing that exists. And then there's the little bar off the side. There's no written directions for this kit. So if you do not know what it does... And I don't know what it does. I'm very, very sorry, okay? This engine has to be started. We can lower the header. It doesn't do anything. Hit Z to remove its wheels. I think that's another control that has to be done back here. Okay, then we can turn on B. Okay, and it's running. I've only got this to work a couple times, so I'm just kind of going through everything here, okay? Go back up to here. B. B. Okay, hopefully it works. So we pull forward. And there it goes. Okay, so that's how that works. Okay, on one of these. Like some of the options you have to be in the harvester for, and some you have to be in the tractor for, and it's really, really frustrating. 
but the capacity isn't that much and it would take you forever to do one of these fields. Uh, I think it works a little bit better with one of the other tractors, but I kind of like pulling it with the tract tractor. Uh, to me, it seems to work a little bit better. Okay, so let's just hop back over into here. And we will hit okay. okay. That should make it look a little bit better. And there you go. And it starts pooping it out. So that is everything that works. And there's only a couple things that don't, okay? So uh, it doesn't really show a good amount of fill level, at least. Unless it comes, like, all of a sudden, I don't know. Because we're, like, half full and it's only barely showing. I'll go all the way down here to the end. I know it sounds like I'm really sick of this pack right now. I've been recording for an hour and a half trying to make everything work. Okay, it, again, it's all in Russian. I don't read Russian. I'm in the Midwest of the United States, and I, I don't know any of it. <laughs> okay, so I'm just trying to make a video where if people have questions they can kind of skim through this video and go, oh, okay that's how that works oh, okay that's what that's for to the best of my knowledge you know that's how this stuff works okay so there is that that is the harvester done it is slowly starting to fill up so apparently it does actually show the fill level so there we go it works Now, on to the things that don't work. Okay, so this is one of the pieces of equipment I could not get to work, no matter how much I tried, and it is the conveyor belt. There's some really, really odd options, and I, I don't know how it would work, like, at all, because it's not a, like, get inable deal like some of our other ones. Okay, so we get in here. And we have the option to detach and attach. And no big deal. It can only be attached to certain tractors. In, which is open cover, puts on a belt, which I would thought would go to the, what's called a PTO, on our tractor here. But it, I can't get it to go like that. Okay. So we hit pipe out, and it places the block on the bottom. And I'm like, okay, well, you can use the tractor whenever it's not hooked up to power the the belt to get the, the conveyor to work. Okay, cool idea, I thought. But it doesn't work. <laughs> so, I've tried every single control I knew how to use. And you can turn it on. But as soon as you detach and you're like, oh, okay, I'm going to go hook up to this it doesn't you can't do anything there's no like there's no option I thought that there would be like an option or something so this is one of those pieces I don't know how to use so it might work and it might not I don't know I just want to get the two things that don't work for me out of the way okay so the other thing that isn't working for me is the crane so it all starts up, it runs and everything. I drove it over here. Uh, I won't run through starting it. Uh, the controls are hit X to let everything out. And you gain a little worker buddy here on the crane platform itself, which is pretty, you know, neat. Okay. Left control, left and right, up and down. Okay, now you'll see that there's a little strap right there. I'm like, oh, okay, so we're going to come down here. We're going to lower this right on top of there, and you hit L. Okay, so it takes away that. It's a little bit fiddly. Okay, so we're in the hook. It doesn't pick up by the hook. There's no collision there. So we hit L. Okay, it looks like it's attached. And it doesn't do anything. So I don't know what that's about. I can't get it to work. And I've tried everything that I know how to do. So 
if somebody else knows how to make it work, then awesome. If not, then okay. Okay, so hopefully that helps out anybody that had questions about this pack. It's available on both modland.net and the ModHub site, the modhub.us. I'll have my video on both of those. So hopefully anybody that comes here from that, if you've got any other questions, please feel free to ask. This is like a 500 megabyte download and you have to take all the parts out of it and put it in your mod folder. Okay, it comes as one giant zip file with a bunch of little zip files in it. I didn't have any kind of virus protection or anything like that go off, so it should be kind of safe. There are a couple issues, but they're with textures. Um, we can go back up through here. The EULA script is for the uh, independent part thing. Like, there are some things that don't work, okay? Uh, like, you can't load the resource from the EULA script or something like that. I mean, it all works. It's just really odd. Like, it's little items that need to be fixed. But, uh, yeah. So, this mod was brought to my attention by somebody in my comments. Thank you. I'll probably use some of these parts in Altenstein in the future. So, I just wanted to make this so hopefully everybody can kind of get a better idea how it works because it was kind of fiddly so hopefully it helps somebody um other than that everybody have a good day if you have any other suggestions please let me know in the comments below if you like the video hit like if you didn't like it hit dislike and we'll see you in the next one